Hello guys, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be installing the ventilation for our new Fiat Ducato medium wheelbase van conversion. Now, ventilation is one of the most important things in your van. If you've lived in a van at all like we have for a number of years, you'll know that you need to deal with some condensation when you obviously you're living in the van, you're breathing, you're cooking in the van, etc. All these processes produce moisture in the air that you need to get rid of. So you need adequate ventilation. Now, I know this is going to be a budget field, but there's one area that I didn't really want to scrimp on. Um, I know we can save loads of money elsewhere on this build. So as far as ventilation goes, I want to install one of these Max fans. Now, I know they're not the cheapest option on the market, but they are so worth the money. They're absolutely brilliant. We've had one of the, well, we've got two of these van, fans installed in our van, one front and back. And they've been absolutely brilliant you know it's a complete game changer when we put these on i've done a detailed unboxing video previously on the channel so i'll just put a link up the top corner here and i'll also put a link in the description so if you want to see me talk about all the features in more detail then please do go and have a look at that video first this particular video is going to be an installation video where we're going to be putting this fan on the roof of our van it's difficult to say. <laughs> so what we need to do first is we need to build a wooden frame because when we cut a hole in the roof of our van that's going to weaken that structure. So we're going to build a timber frame that goes underneath the roof to give that a little bit more strength and then once we've got that timber frame built we can then jump into the van and talk about obviously cutting it and installing this and you'll see us do that from start to finish. Now this new van that we're doing is a medium wheelbase. It's much shorter than our old van. We've got one fan front and back on our old van to give us the ability to have extract and supply. Both fans can blow in or out so we can get good circulation. Now this is only a short van. So I'm only going to put one fan in on this. So I'm going to put this fan at the front where the kitchen is, mainly because when you're cooking, it'll be in the best place to extract out all those moisture from the cooking processes but thing to bear in mind with ventilation when you put a fan on the roof of your van you need uh, adequate means to get the air back in so if you're extracting air out of your van if you've got all the windows done up and the doors closed where's that air going to come from um, I'll give you a little simple example with this bottle let's say this plastic bottle Imagine this is our van, it's all sealed, and uh, I'm just actually going to just obviously suck on the end of this bottle here to simulate us putting the fan on, on extract. And you see exactly what happened there straight away. There's no air for the air to come to make up the air that you're trying to get out. And it produces a vacuum in there, and it wants to crush this bottle, obviously. Um, now that's not going to happen in, in your van in terms of your van walls collapsing but you need to provide adequate air to come back into the van by other means so that this fan can work because all that will happen is this fan will actually stall and it will probably just intercirculate within itself and it won't be doing what you want it to do which is pull all the air out of the van. So what we're going to do to provide that is the windows that we've had cut into the side of the van we've now got opening windows. On our old van, we had bonded windows with no openers, but that's because we had fans front and back. So we had the means to provide that extra air. In the new fan, we're gonna put windows in the side, which have got opening windows, so that when we put the fan on, we can crack one of those windows open, and that'll give us the air to make up for the air that's being taken out. Right, enough talking, let's get on with it. In the front of the Fiat Ducato, there's a flat area of the ceiling, which is an ideal location for the fan. So our timber curb would sit in this area here. Now we need to ideally want this timber to be the same level as the battens that we're gonna put on these beams so that we can run the ceiling through all in one go. So an easy way to find that is put a piece of scrap timber on these beams and then measure down from the roof 
make a note of what that dimension is and then simply add on to that the 12 mil plywood that we're going to put on these beams and that'll give us the depth that these battens need to be and then we'll find some suitable wood and then cut ourselves a frame to fit in there So that's it, there's our pieces of wood. I've cut all the half laps with the saw and uh, that all fits together nicely. That's it. So our internal dimension now is 355 or 14 inches. So we're just going to glue them together now with some Gorilla Glue. I'm going to put them in some clamps overnight and then tomorrow we can look at cutting the hole in the roof and fixing this in position. Plenty of glue. Just use the old faithful brush. <laughs> So now I've got it in the clamps, I'm just going to make sure that it's actually square before the glue goes off. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Right, so we'll just leave that till tomorrow now and then we'll fit it in the van. Right, on the Fiat Giacato models, Peugeot Box, uh, Citroen Relay and Promaster, there's an area at the front of the van on the roof here which is kind of raised and it gives you a flat surface. And this is where we're going to be mounting the fan. Once we've cut the 355 by 355 hole or sort of 14 inches square we'll have a nice flat surface for which to put our sealant on so this is the ideal location to do it. If you're somewhere else on the roof like you want to put a fan further back you've got all the ridges to contend with. Now in the past what I've done is I've filled those these sort of depressions with mastic sealing tape to make up that depth to give us a level surface but now there are on the market you can buy these roof frames these ones are distributed by leisure vehicle services and as you can see this profile matches the ribs on the roof of the van so when you put it onto the van they sit in those depressions and it gives you a perfectly level surface so if you're doing one at the back of the van this would be the ideal thing to use and then all you need to apply is some sealant on this on the underside and on top and you don't really need to use the mastic sealing tape so as with all my videos i'll put all the links in the description for where you can purchase these roof frames they also do a circular version because they do a range of circular extract fans you know for toilets and showers and so forth this particular one is 150 millimeters in diameter, so six inch, six inch hole basically, and it suits one of their fans. So again, all the links will be in the description below of where you can buy these roof frames and it will make your installation a lot easier. So looking at the condition of the roof, obviously the age of this vehicle, what somebody's done in the past, it looks like they've rollered a gloss paint onto the roof of the van, obviously in their attempt to give it some protection. I can see loads of little bubble marks where they've used a roller, and that's obviously made the paint bubble. Um, and I can see some points where the paint's flaking a little bit as well, maybe because they didn't prep the surface very well. So that gives me a bit of an added problem that we've got to deal with. Now, I'm gonna use this roof fan profile just to roughly mark out an area 
and this is where I'm going to want to use stick my sealant and mastic sealing tape once we've cut the hole. I'll mark it all the way around and what I'm going to have to do is use some sandpaper I'm going to have to rub this paint back. For one obviously this is a gloss finish so it's not really going to take a sealant it's not going to, I don't want things peeling off of here um, so I need to get rid of this shiny surface so I've got something nice to key the sealant uh, so you know so it can ad adhere to it without peeling off in the future I also want to get rid of some of these flaky bits of paint and I want a nice surface that I can stick our fan to so I'm not going to have any issues later on down the line If your fan has the original factory paint on it you obviously don't need to do this stage you just need to make sure it's really clean and dry get rid of any dirt or grease or anything like that and then you'll be able to seal straight onto the van body on the original paintwork but obviously we're only doing this because somebody else has painted this with gloss paint right we'll just give that a clean now just with some warm soapy water doesn't need to be anything more than that get rid of any dirt any of the dust from sanding what we're going to do now is uh, mask that up and then mark out a hole that we then cut with a jigsaw yeah let's just keep that surface that's got rid of any loose paint, although we're going to cut probably a lot of that away anyway. We'll just make sure that it's all good. We'll paint that raw edge when we've cut it with some hammerite. And then we'll be good to put our sealing tape on that. On the Ducato, on the age of this vehicle, which is a late 2006, the 355 mark actually lands exactly on the edge of that ridge and exactly on the edge of that ridge, so that's quite handy. So we can use those two for those sides and then we'll measure and mark the other two sides using the square. And it's really important because you're going to cut a hole in the roof of your van, so measure, measure, measure again before you do any cutting. Make sure you've got exactly how it needs to be before you start drilling and cutting because then you can't go back. I've just taped up a bin liner on the underside of the van roof. So when we're cutting above, it'll catch any of the metal swarf and it's not gonna go all over the van and then leave us with a massive clearing up job. So you need to make sure you capture all the swarf and clean the roof of the van as well because that will go rusty eventually and then that'll start damaging all your paintwork and that. Right, let's just go through some of the tools that we're going to be using to install this fan. First of all, we're going to need a drill and a high speed drill bit just to drill a hole to get the jigsaw in. The drill bit needs to be at least 9 or 10 millimeters in size. Obviously, we've got the jigsaw we're going to cut the hole with. Let's just quickly talk about the blades because there are different blades. You need to be able to identify them. So this is a wood blade and I hope you can see how kind of aggressive those teeth are they're quite big teeth on wood cutting blades because it's a soft material so it can rip through it quite quick what you actually need to be looking for is again a high speed steel bit and the teeth are very very small Let's see if I can get close up of that you can see how small those teeth are so that's what you need you need a high speed steel jigsaw bit for cutting metal and then well, I'm going to be using some of this W4 mastic sealing strip 
we're going to put a layer of that down first because I find this stuff really brilliant for waterproofing fans and that it stays um, soft it never goes off it's really super super sticky and um, yeah brilliant for doing anything like that the recommended sealant that uh, Max Air recommends is, is Sikaflex 522 that's what we're going to be using to seal around the outside we've obviously got some silver hammerite to treat that raw metal edge when we cut it and then I've got some clamps just to clamp that wooden frame to the underside and hold it all in place while we uh, put the screws in there we go there's the basic tool kit first thing I want to do is drill a hole in the corner just inside of my marks and that gives me somewhere where I can just plunge the jigsaw into just make sure that you're wearing some safety glasses because you don't want a piece of you know sharp swarf flying into your eye Right, that new blade has left quite a clean cut on the roof here but there's one or two tiny little burrs so just with a normal flat file just going to go around and take off any burrs and then we'll give that a coat of paint Right, now what we need to do is we need to get rid of all of this swarf off the roof here because otherwise when that rains that will go rusty and that will just ruin our nice paintwork. drop all these iron filings everywhere after we've taken all the time to try and catch them. Just take it down carefully, go up the sides. Yeah, and if you have a look in there, look, you can see that. All them iron filings, they would have gone all over the van everywhere. It would have been a hell of a clean up job. Sorted. hole in the roof of my van. I've got to stick my head through it haven't I? <laughs> right just gonna put a bit of hammerite on this raw metal edge just to give it a bit of protection stop it going rusty in future. You can paint hammerite directly onto raw metal you don't really need a primer and save me brushes I'm just gonna use a few of these little cotton buds. It's 
scissors. I'll cut it oversized and then I can trim it back with a knife. Just make sure when you put this next piece on that the two edges are actually physically touching really well. They'll stick together but they'll make sure there's not a gap there because otherwise potentially water could creep through there. So put it on and push it right into that other piece that's already there and those two bits will bond together. Cut this one exactly where your last one was. And then make sure these are pushed together as well. So what you want to do here, see, is you want to make sure that these, there's no gap here, that these are actually stuck right tight together. And then no water can creep through there. And this stuff's like chewing gum, it's really sticky. That's it. Okay, so now we can fit the frame for the fan. And that's one of the beauties as well of this Max Fan installation is you can detach the roof frame from the actual fan and just fit this. It makes the job a whole lot easier. The metal fixings for the fan need to be on the sides. Don't have it around that way. So make sure they're on the side. It is universal. Center it in your hole. And then just drop it down onto that mastic sealing tape. And then what we can do is we'll just squeeze that together just to make that initial bond. And then what we'll do obviously is we'll come back. We'll put the wooden frame on the inside. And then we'll put some self-tapping screws in there just to secure it all and then after we've done that we can come round with some Sikaflex and seal all the screws in the edging but that's stuck really nicely now to the roof the power supply for the fan is going to come from a fuse board that i'm going to have up in the kitchen cupboard up at high level there so the power is going to come from this side of the fan so I've just cut a little notch out of the wooden frame just so we've got some way of routing the cables out and obviously back down that way and down to the fuse board. So just make sure you cut a little notch or drill a hole or some means of getting the cable out before you fix the frame. The reason I've put that bead of sealant on there is to bond this wood frame to the roof to give it more structure and more rigidity because obviously we've cut that hole and now that metal edge is quite flimsy as you've seen. So this is going to add loads and loads of strength to that opening as well as giving us something additional to screw into other than just the metal skin of the roof. So we'll offer this up. Squeeze it onto the roof of our van. And then what I've got, just to hold it in place, I'm just gonna put a couple of clamps on, but I'm only gonna 
put these on very lightly just to hold it there so it doesn't fall off and then we can go up on top and pop the screws in just squeeze that Sikaflex so it bonds to the roof that's it right the screws that are provided in the pack are uh, what's called a self tapping screw but they will need a pilot hole so what you'll need to do is get yourself a high speed drill bit which is slightly smaller than the screw something about two and a half millimeters maybe three millimeters maximum to drill a pilot hole initially through the metalwork and then these self tapping screws will then be able to cut a thread so that's what you need to do if you're fitting the screws supplied the other option is screw fix and other suppliers do a self drilling screw now the difference is this screw has actually got a drill bit point on it so you don't need to drill a pilot hole you can literally just screw this in and it will start cutting its own hole as it goes in so these screws are 4.2 by 25 millimeters long they're exactly the same size as the manufactured supplied screws but they're a self drilling screw you don't need the pilot hole so these are what i'm going to use the trick with these screws is you don't want to over tighten them you don't want to deform this plastic you just want to nip them up so they're snug if you deform the plastic too much over time it will crack uh, they don't need a, a lot of pressure so when you get down to the bottom just go slowly just till it's snug you saw the plastic just move a little bit that's enough don't go any further now just with a sharp knife I'm just going to trim off the excess mastic sealing strip and then we can come back afterwards and put a bead of Sikaflex in there that's it just trim this trim this off neatly and then what we'll do is we'll put a bead of Sikaflex all the way around the fan there we go. To make it easier to install the fan and to get at these screws here you can manually open it with just this little wheel here and then that exposes these a bit more easily you can get to them then so we need to feed this wire through that hole that we cut in the timber first and then lower it down A little bit tricky do with somebody maybe on the inside just to pull these through feed them through that little hole that we made earlier That's it. 
sometimes it's difficult to line these holes up when you install the fan sometimes you have to put a little bit of pressure on top of the fan not too much and it often helps to have a tiny little screwdriver just to line up the holes keep a bit of pressure on there so that you can get the screw in and started and then the same with these back ones they are a bit tricky but you can do it Right, now it's time for the best bit. Oh, doesn't it look fantastic? What a good job. <laughs> there we go, Max fan installed. What a cracking job. So you can see it's really wet on the floor. It's actually raining at the moment. It's the next day. All the sticker flex has gone off. Rain on the windscreen there. Obviously the roads are wet. And no signs of any drips or anything at all. Which is really good news. So, yeah, it's perfect. A job well done. In next week's video, we're going to start on the electrical install. And I really do think I've got the best budget off-grid electrical system that you can get in a camper van. So you really don't want to miss this one. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, tick the little bell notification, and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.